Well, to, uh, to Jeremy's point about oh. there being two Republican parties, here is Senator Martha McSally of the actual Republican Party lashing out at a CNN reporter who asked her if the Senate should consider the new material provided by Rudy Giuliani indicted associate Lev Parnas during President Trump's impeachment. Senator McSally, should the Senate consider new evidence as part of the impeachment trial? Man, are you a liberal hack? I'm not talking to you. You're not going to comment, Senator? You're a liberal hack. Okay, now McSally is trying to capitalize on her on-camera run-in with the reporter, which was completely natural and not planned. Her campaign <laughs> sent out a fundraising email yesterday wow. calling on supporters to help, quote, fight back against liberal hacks. It's worth pointing out uh, this. Here is that so-called liberal hack reporter last year questioning Democratic Congressman Ilan Omar, one of the most liberal members of Congress, about President Trump's comments that she should step down over her comments blaming Jewish political donors for Republican support of Israel. Uh, Jonathan Lemire, um, it was, uh, yeah. we talked about bad acting yesterday. This was, of course, not just bad acting, but it was a bad example uh, for uh, everybody in Arizona uh, to see their senator acting that way. Uh, but this particular reporter uh, has, I mean, uh, I can name biased liberal reporters, uh, beat reporters. <laughs> he's He's... <laughs> He's certainly he's not uh, on that list. He's hasn't he always been respected as one of the most down down the line reporters? Absolutely. And uh, a number of his colleagues rallied to his defense yesterday, and rightly so. He's, he's a good reporter, and he asks tough questions sometimes, but fair questions. And again, let's go, well, we saw the video there. Like, he did it in a very polite manner. I mean, this was a reason, reasonable request in, in, a, in a timely manner, and like he did it in a polite way. And it was clearly the cameras running. McSally had a video up on her Twitter feed within, within the hour of the, of the moment. They're fundraising off of it. The president himself has approved. But the person at, in our 12 box right now who knows Congress best, is Jake Sherman. So, Jake, let me go to you here. What did you make of this yesterday? Was this just simply an attempt to score cheap political points? Is this the kind of behavior that we usually see from this senator? And, like, how inappropriate was this exchange? Well, I could speak about uh, Manu Raju, the reporter, because I worked with him for seven or eight years, and he's one of my close friends. I, it's, it's laughable that he's a liberal hack. He, he has been accused by Rand Paul at times of being Mitch McConnell's press secretary. He is the <laughs> hardest, he is the hardest hitting Capitol Hill reporter probably in the press corps. He is incredibly fair. Maybe she was talking about his golf game, which is quite bad. He is yeah. a hack as a golfer, <laughs> wow. but he is, uh, he, he, he chases everybody. He, uh, I've written a million stories with him in my career, and I, there's literally no better reporter. And it's weird because, um, first of all, his her predecessor, John McCain and, and Manu, had a very good and, and tough relationship at times. And this is not the kind of behavior any reporter is used to on Capitol Hill. And clearly, McSally is feeling pressure that uh, from a, a tough re-election campaign on an opponent that's raising uh, millions of dollars to unseat her, because this kind of behavior is bizarre. We don't really see this too much, because on Capitol Hill, we kind of coexist exist with members of Congress. So very strange behavior. Well, you know, it, it, it is strange, Susan Del Percio, and it's strange coming from her. Uh, she served this country proudly. Uh, when she lost a very close race, uh, she conceded uh, and was very dignified about it. I remember noting how, uh, what a nice uh, break that was from uh, just mm -hmm. sort of the cantankerous approach that most politicians that were losing races were taking. Um, and, but, but yesterday, that she just embarrassed herself. She embarrassed the state of Arizona. She set a terrible example because the question was a very straightforward question. Do you want more information? Do you want, do you want to know the truth? And it was so clearly calculated. It was like the bad acting of Ted Cruz that we were talking about. I'm surprised she demeaned herself, uh, immediately put it in a fundraising pitch. And yes, John McCain was very tough with reporters and news hosts, I, my, myself being one of those. Uh, but, it, but both he and like Alan Simpson, for instance, told me when I first got to Congress, he goes, he goes, listen, uh, they're tough. 
and they're going to be all over you. But Joe, return a reporter's phone call. They got a job to do and 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 treat them with respect and dignity. There was Alan Simpson, who, by the way, was very tough with the reporters, too. This just this was just a cheap attack, a cheap shot uh, just for uh, to have some cheap copy at a fundraising note. It's it seems to be beneath the be beneath contempt for a United States senator to do this. Yeah, and it, she just snapped and used it. It seems now that is the Republicans' go-to line when they want to make President Trump happy is just to attack the, the press, especially CNN and other news outlets. So, and she, it was really disgraceful. I was shocked to see it, frankly. But this is her, this is the narrative she has chosen. I mean, I think at some point she probably realized she was appointed to this position. She needs the party support. And she's now decided to fall in line, which is a shame, because that was not the way she ran her campaign, even though she lost. And like you said, she did a great concession. The other thing I think now that we're moving into a new phase, Joe, is, you know, elected th these senators are going to go home to their districts, are going to spend time out there. And then when they come back Tuesday, they're going to be together for a very long time. They're going to be together six days a week eight hours a day, they will not have all the outside influence that they typically are used to in a day in, in their day to day business. I think that this may have an interesting effect on some of them as they have to look at their colleagues and be almost accountable to each other in what they're listening to and being honest about what how they should vote and seeking witnesses, et cetera. So, Michael Steele, you know this business well. That's a transparent game that Martha McSally was playing yesterday. She heard a straightforward question. She barked about the reporter being a liberal hack. Two hours later, the Twitter account for Trump's 2020 reelection campaign, The War Room, literally said three cheers for Martha McSally. Mm -hmm. After that, her fundraising letter goes out and she takes on her challenger, perhaps with a little more strength. But as Joe pointed to, uh, she served in the United States Air Force, went to the Harvard School of Government. She's a, she was a pretty down the middle national security yeah. Republican. She's not like a talk radio host who got elected to Congress. But this is what Donald Trump has done to Republicans. And this is what he's done to somebody who's got a tough reelection campaign coming up. It's like watching a, a, a rose sort of wither right there in front of your face. You know, the 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 corruption, the poison, the the ugliness, the, you know, you know, knock the hell out of them. Uh, the, the ugly rallies, all of that that, that, that is feeding into the veins of the party in such a way that, uh, you know, an Air Force vet like Sally, uh, like McSally uh, sounds like a political hack uh, and, and acts like one. Uh, and responds to a legitimate question. She could have just kept on to her office. She could have just, you know, said, well, you know, quick answer and move on. But no, let me, let me do the smackdown, and then we utilize that to our advantage. The rub here is, is that she's in a tough reelection, uh, and, and Mark Kelly is giving her what for right now. Uh, and so those pressures... Uh, are, are going to manifest themselves even more over the next few months. And so for her, the challenge is going to be, how does she walk that line? Because the problem when you're in Trump world is you only see what's two feet in front of you. And what Republicans need to get in their heads, this is a long game. Their day will come where he will not be there. You will have no cover. And you will be fully exposed to the rest of the electorate, the rest of the country. And what do you do then? When they call up your record, when they show video clips of your behavior, you don't think Mark Kelly is going to run that ad this fall? Or the rest of the state gets to see their senator, their appointed senator, act like a political hack on behalf of the president? So you got to think long term here. You got to be smarter than the man in front of you who's telling you to show your behind, as my mama used to say, <laughs> and recognize your role as a United States senator and act accordingly. I mean, well, and, you know, we get it in the House, we yeah. know what's over there. But in the Senate, the expectation is a little bit greater, a little bit more. And the responsibility in front of you right now is to adjudge this, this president's behavior objectively on behalf of the country. And this is how you're going to do it. Long game, baby, long game. You've got to be smart. <laughs> and they're not. And they're thinking right now, let me make Trump happy. That'll make my day. Mm. I'll raise a half a million dollars. I'm good. No, you're not. Because in the fall, the voters are going to vote on your behavior well, and your and, leadership. And, 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 you know, the thing, the thing is, Willie, if 
she raises half a million dollars off of that. Her opponent raises a million dollars off of that. <laughs> Arizona is a swing state. It's just a, that no, it it doesn't work. Her opponent is going to do just as well, or better, uh, yes. fundraising off of that moment. And the only thing she's done is hurt herself in the eyes of independent and swing voters that are trying to figure out which way to go. Voters are pretty smart, aren't they? And they can see through something yeah. as transparent as a, a short-term fundraising pop like we saw yesterday. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.